Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to work on the transition effect for the drop down submenu on this navigation menu. We're almost done with ours, and here's basically what I want to focus on. When I hover over a main menu item, you'll notice that the submenu has a very subtle little transition effect. And it's pretty similar to the subtle transition effect on the little border that it shows up around my main menu item. Now, on where I left off in the last video, we certainly have the hover effect. I'm sorry, the transition on the hover effect for the border. I'm pretty satisfied with that. But basically, I want this submenu to kind of just ease in a little bit more carefully. I don't want it just to pop in. Now what we're doing on our uh, CSS is basically our submenu is set to display none, but when somebody hovers over a list item, the submenu changes to display block. And, uh, and that's pretty good. The problem is, is we can't put a transition effect on something that is changing display from none to block. It'd be great if we could. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to change my submenu display from none to block. And that's going to be convenient because in the short term we'll be able to see it and we'll see what's going on. And instead what I'm going to do, instead of doing display none, I'm going to set an opacity of 0.2. Save that, browser refresh. Actually, it's a little faint. <coughs> Ultimately, I'm going to have an opacity of zero, but I want you to see it in the short term. So, okay, so there's the opacity. Yeah, I can get it to fade out a bit. And then when I hover over my list item, I want that submenu opacity to change to one. So it goes from faint to solid. And that's going to be a pretty nice effect. And we can do a transition effect on there. So with my submenu, I can put in a transition, change the opacity. And let's see, I want, um, let's do this over 300 milliseconds and I'll just do linear. Save that browser refresh. And it has a pretty nice little effect when I hover over that. But you'll notice that when I hover away, the opacity just jumps back. And that's because I don't want to have the transition effect right on the hover state of my submenu. Let me cut that. Instead, I want to put the transition state on the submenu itself. Refresh. And there we go. So we can see that it's fading in, or fade, you know, fading in to C, changing the opacity, and fades out. Now, if I were to change this opacity from 0.4 to 0, you're not going to see it at all. So now, it does a little bit of a fade in. And you might be pretty satisfied with that. It's not a bad way to go. However, look at this little anomaly. When I move my mouse over where the submenu is, it appears. You could be okay with that. However, that could cause issues if you have other content on your web page that a user might need to hover over or select or click and drag and things like that. And although the problem doesn't seem that great at the moment, it would stand out to us once we put the unordered list or the submenu in all of these other list items. So in addition to changing the opacity, I'm also going to be changing the height. I'm going to put the opacity back to uh, 0.4 so that we can kind of see what's going on for a moment. And in, in addition to changing my opacity to 1, I'm going to change the max height to 300 pixels. It doesn't really matter what I choose for the max height of my submenu, but I do need to make sure that it is big enough. Now, I really want this number to be on the hover state, so that's going to be pretty good. But in my original submenu, like I'm going to hide it with opacity, I'm going to set the max height to zero pixels. So in addition to changing the opacity, I'm also going to be changing the max height. Now look what happens here. Notice that I really can't see, um, or I can see part of that where the uh, list item is, and it's got that padding, so I can see that. But you notice I can just see the font too, and I don't want to see the text the submenu items. So there's a way that we can cover that. Basically with my submenu, I can also set the overflow to hidden. Save that 
and now I can't see the text. I can still see it up there a little bit. So, and that's of course part of that padding issue that I've got. So, what I could do with my submenu is I could set the padding to zero, and I start to remove even more of that content. Now I can still see a little bit, so let's exaggerate this even more, and I'll do a negative 10 for that top padding. And now it goes away. But now I really want this to appear in a nice, cool, gradual way. So there's several things that I'm going to change with my transition effect. So currently, with my transition on my submenu, I'm changing the opacity, but I'm also going to do this. I'm going to change the max height. I'll do that over 400 milliseconds, linear. And I also want to change the padding. And I'll do this over, um, let's try 400 milliseconds as well, linear. So basically, that's what I want my submenu to be for the transition effects. Now I need to make sure that I'm happy with the starting opacity, max height, and padding, and the finishing. So my submenu opacity is not going to be 0.4 it's going to be zero. The max height is going to be zero. The upper padding is going to be negative 10 per sec, 10 pixels. Now when I hover, the opacity is going to change to one. The max height is going to be 300. And my um, padding, I could just do padding top, but I'll do 20 pixels, zero pixels, 20 pixels, and zero pixels, because that's what I had before. All right, let's test it out. I think everything is saved. Head on over to the browser, refresh, and now we get a pretty nice little fade in drop down effect for that submenu. Now once you can see that it's working in a nice attractive way that you're satisfied with, notice I can't hover underneath, well then it's just a matter of copying that submenu to the other list items. That'll be pretty easy. So right after an anchor tag, I'm going to copy all of this to the front of the list item. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste this at the ends of my other anchor tags. So now every menu item is going to have a submenu. And just so that we can see what it looks like, I'll uh, put two of them on a couple or at least on one. There we go. I'll delete that. So now we have two on some. Doesn't matter with the spacing. Save that browser refresh. And here we go. Now our illusion is complete. We have our submenus appearing right there as we hover over. And I just noticed this. I don't see my little triangle anymore. There's one other thing I need to change on hover. So back on the CSS, if you recall, when I adjusted that max height, there it is. I did a max height of zero pixels and I did overflow hidden so that nothing would show up. However, when I'm hovering over the submenu, I do want to be able to see that little triangle, which means I need to see something that's outside of the boundaries of the submenu. So I need to, in the hover state, when my submenu shows up, I need to add overflow visible to basically counteract the overflow hidden. Control S to save, browser refresh, and there we go. Now my little triangle shows back up, my little arrow, and I think our illusion is complete. So there it is. We've got a horizontal nav menu with a submenu drop down, which has a nice little transition effect. Hope you enjoyed it.